All right, today we're gonna to run through a nice regime for those of you who've got AC, a chromioclavicular joint injury, so you've been diagnosed by the physio with a AC joint injury, then this is a nice rehab regime for you to start with. So this is for the people that have got pain in their AC joint, maybe they're just a little bit bruised, maybe they've had an impact trauma, maybe it's a bit of wear and tear from too much weight lifting that they've had over time, there's a bit of inflammation there. This is not the ones that have ruptured where they actually have separation or dislocation of the AC joint or, a, or clavicular fractures. This is simply just pain in the AC joint from impact or trauma or for long-term inflammation. So I did a video before about taping. So if you've got problems that are, or if you're really acute, have a look at the taping video. But if you're past that stage and you need to do some strengthening work, then I've got four exercises to work on. Now, they're all basically scapular base. We're trying to work below shoulder height, working on scapular control. Because when you've got an AC joint injury, most of the time, if you have it for too long and it gets weak and painful, that shoulder, so that's this one, starts dropping forward and that shear mechanic doesn't help your AC joint. We've got to stabilize this joint. It's very difficult, but we've got to try and stabilize this joint by working on shoulder blade stability, strengthening work, not necessarily rotator cuff. You'll work on rotator cuff work down the track when you're starting to do, trying to go back to overhead stuff and pressing. But to start with, to try and stabilize it, get it feeling better, or settling it down, you need to work on stability. So think about looking after the joint. Remember, this AC joint is the only attachment of this arm, the only bony attachment to the entire skeleton. So there's a lot of demand goes on this joint. So when you do injure it, you've got a bit of a problem on your hands. So you've got to work on stability first, strengthening second, and then you'll rotate a cuff for work. So let's work on some strengthening work, some stability work. So what I like making sure of is you're getting your pressing work right. We've got to actually got to load this joint. So for this exercise, we're doing a scapular press. Now, you can do them on the floor, you can do them against the wall, I like for AC ones, trying to work on a bar at about this sort of one meter high height. Now, in the gym, you can use a bar, use a Smith machine, or you can just rack one up like this. At home, just pick a bench height, okay? So kitchen bench, that sort of thing, or a kitchen table, because that's about the same height. Kitchen table is probably a little bit lower, but kitchen bench height is about a meter. So that's a good sort of height for you to work on. Depends how tall you are, of course. But what I get people to do is start off so you're in a position where, if you look at me, I'm basically no higher than 90 degrees at the shoulder joint from the arm. So if you imagine like, I'm no higher than this point. I don't want to be up into this point here, okay? We want to be everything at least shoulder height or below, okay? So when you're here, you then can step backwards, but you can't step backwards too far because it's too high. So make sure that when you're in this position, you stay on your toes, so you force yourself to weight bear through there. And even just holding that position there is probably enough demand for some people who are a little bit acute. They might go from two hands to just try and take one hand away. But for those of you who you know, need a bit of strength work on this, what I suggest we do is go from this position and go into a scapular press, like retraction there, and push away. So the scapular press, remember, is keeping your elbow straight Try and aim for a little bit of external rotation so you're actively in rotator cuff, you're actively into, extension, into external rotation here, which sort of stabilizes your shoulder joint for a start. Because remember, we need to stabilize the shoulder joint because we're moving at the AC. So if I go into that position, I'm moving that AC joint back and forth. Yes, my shoulder blade is going retraction, protraction, but I'm putting some demand through it. The good thing about this one is you start off as closed chain. So if you find that when you go down into there, there's too much strain, well, just don't go that far, okay? Start working on maybe just retracting a bit and then pushing away to full protraction. So retracting a bit, full protraction. Remember, we're trying to actually actively move this joint, okay? If it's inflamed and it's weak and it's all, we need to provide a little bit of load to strengthen it up. Too much, it's gonna aggravate and inflame it, okay? So doing bench press and loaded pressing, which you've probably found hurts, is too much load. Plus, if you put in an elbow bend, there's three joints that play there instead of one. So we need to make sure that you're just trying to dial it down to one joint, isolate that and stabilize that, and then once that's better, then you can progress on. So be sure when you're on this position here, like I said, below 90 degrees, when you're facing that way, the hand 
can't be wide like that. You need to be the same with your elbow, sorry, wrist, elbow, and shoulder all in the same line, okay? Don't be out here, all right? So when I'm on this bar here, that's the position. Take that away, drop down into that without bending my elbow, and push away. If you look in the mirror, when you drop down, don't let it come up, okay? We want it in that position, so you're just basically going in a straight plane back and forward, all right? So that will stress out that joint a little bit, but the stability and the strengthening that you get for it will support it, and that's how you're gonna get a little bit better. So that'll be your starting one, okay? Remember, that's gotta be pain-free. Once you've done that, you can move to an open chain. If you're fine with that one, you can move on open chain. Now, that gives you two exercises to work on pressing, but the open chain one is a little bit harder for the joint, but as long as you keep the weight light, then it's a good one to do. So, if I go into, if I show you on this shoulder now, if I go into this position here, I've got an eight kilo kettlebell, you're going to work on the same movement, okay? If I externally rotate, the bell will sit on the outside, so that will stabilize my joint here. I'm gonna work on one joint, all right? I'm gonna push forward like that, working on the scapula, which means I'm gonna work on the AC joint. Remember, clavicular cranium, so, all right? So when I move my scapula forward, I'm moving that joint, okay? It's gonna hinge up and hinge down that clavicle, so that means I'm gonna put a little bit of load through it, but I don't wanna do that because that's gonna stress out my AC joint. Okay, and for the people who have been pressing and getting sore, you need to stop that and work on just working on that movement because you're still putting load down through the shoulder. Okay, this weight is gonna put load through my AC joint, but a comfortable light load that's gonna help stabilize and strengthen up. Even again, just holding it there like that, for this, is putting a little bit of load through it, but you've got all the muscle work on. Okay, even my pecs on, all right, the deltoids on, my serratus is on, just holding it up in that press position, okay? And that securing movement here will keep that support there, okay, and allow it to strengthen up. So that movement there is gonna be really good. Pressing up, pressing down, just don't have this one too heavy, okay? And making sure you don't bend your elbow. Keep your hand directly over the shoulder so you're nicely in line there, and just working on protract, slow retract all the way back, and project again. Same with that one over there. You're trying to make sure you work in the range that doesn't hurt, okay? Make sure the weight is appropriate, that you can do this movement and not get pain. The whole idea is to try and get exercise, get load, get muscle strengthening through that area to strengthen that joint without pain, then it'll strengthen up and progress along. Hopefully that inflammation will dial down. Those are your first two pressing ones. Then you need to work on retraction one. Now, when I work on retraction stuff, um, a lot of people, when they try and do it with their arm, find that's a little bit awkward. Plus, having your arm up like this sometimes can give you a bit of AC joint pain. So what you can do is modify a scap row by not using your arm. So what I would do is put a TheraBand, not too heavy, right? Put a TheraBand up high and hook it up high. Now I've just got that around one of those bolts up there so it's not gonna calm that, come down. What you do, if I'm gonna use this shoulder, is put that around the back of the scapula like that, okay? So I've got a force trying to pull me forward, okay? It's because I'm gonna do retraction work today with this. What I would do though, is just step back a bit so you've got some load to start with, all right? And just turn yourself around a bit too, because otherwise, if you're facing this way, it's just gonna slip off, okay? So have it around the back of the acromium. We want, remember, around the back of the acromium, not on the arm, the acromium, all right? So from that point, I've turned around a bit, and this will also give me a forced line of pull. So when I pull backwards, I'm gonna pull back my shoulder blade is going to retract and come back this way, okay? It's not just gonna go straight backwards. I've got this sort of angle of pull that if I fight the band, I'm actually trying to pull backwards and around with that shoulder blade, which is sort of the opposite of that protraction move, which is quite nice. The other thing about having it high is, I'm gonna pull back and down, all right? So try and think about the line of pull is, if I have my, I'll put my hand by my side, if I let that go up and forward, Okay, it's protraction elevation. I'm gonna think about resisting that band. I'm gonna pull my shoulder blade down 
and back and into the spine like that. So when you're pulling down, it's going to get you working on your lower trap as well as your rhomboids, which is a really nice way of trying to get both muscle systems working in the back of your shoulder blade. So having that high is a really good idea rather than having it vertical. Um, the good thing about this is when you're moving that shoulder blade down into retraction depression, you're moving your AC joint, but you're doing unloaded work. So I'm not doing any pressing forward or pressing up. And this way, I'm gonna get muscle stability, well, joint stability for like for your scapula, using muscles at the back, and I'm getting movement through my AC joint. Okay, now the last one is actually extension. Now this works on sort of two joints, meaning it's gonna work on shoulder joint extension and scapula. Now, you may be thinking why you work on the shoulder joint. Well, this one, yes, does isolate the shoulder joint strengthening work, but what it's teaching you is to stabilize at the AC joint, and that's the key. I also like working on extension for any sort of show AC joint or rotator cuff injuries because the tone at the back is what you need to support these joints. So it's a good one to do, it's a safe one to do, but for this purpose, for this AC joint injury, what we're working on is trying to stabilize that shoulder or stabilize that AC joint there. So what I would use is two bands, okay? Rather than using one band and doubling it up, sometimes that gets too hard because you can't pull it back as much. So what I would do, if you want extra load, use two bands but two long ones so you've got some extent or expansion of the bands, okay? Keep the anchor point lower than your shoulder, okay? We want that hand to anchor point lower than your shoulder height so it's sort of clear from that. But when you pull back, what you've got to make sure of one your elbow straight, okay? And you're going to use your tricep and your rear delt to do the swing movement, but you've got to make sure your shoulder blade is set back first. So you're going to work on some rhomboids and some lower trap back there to pull that shoulder blade back in position. Then you pull through like that. Now, what you've got to work on is making sure you don't lose the shoulder blade retraction position, okay? So when you pull backwards, it's got to stay back. So when it's there, if you watch my, if you imagine like this is my AC joint here, it's got to stay in one position as I extend through there, okay? And then it stays in one position as I move. So what I'm doing is working on my glenohumeral joint, okay? I don't want my AC joint moving at the moment. I want to learn how to stabilize it to support it, to settle it down. So that movement there cannot turn into this sort of movement, all right? So when you pull backwards, you're not allowed to let that pop forward. And sometimes that happens with some people if they're not thinking about, okay, I've got to hold back and keep it there as I pull backwards. So that's very, very important with this. Because like I said, you're trying to learn how to stabilize this joint and settle it down. You can't afford to let it come out of position when you've got load, all right? The other thing I like about this rear delt stuff is it's the closest sort of muscle on the acromium to the AC joint that's not pressing forward, okay? It's pulling back. So it's a really nice one to switch on because it's very close to that AC joint. So that movement there is a real winner for this as well. Remember, you're learning that sort of movement back and forward. Make sure you don't let it pop forward. So those are my four. Have a work on those if you've got some subacute AC joint injuries. We'll see you next time.